Hello, and welcome to a very brief discussion of Richard Dorflinger's essay, Assisted Suicide, Pro-Choice, or Anti-Life. I'd like to stress that with this particular introduction, we will not be covering all of the material in the essay, we'll just be covering the highlights, so you should certainly make an effort to read the essay before attempting any of the course's assignments. In Richard Dorflinger's essay, he begins with the idea that um, in our culture, uh, we have a very strong belief that self-determination is perhaps the most important rights of all. Um, so one and one important and perhaps the most important argument in favor of euthanasia is thus grounded in the claim that it respects an individual's right to control their own life. That is to say, you have the right to choose how you live and part of the right to choose how you live is the right to choose when and how you die. Dorflinger uh, surveys a few counterarguments uh, to this right uh, to the right to self-determination position. Um, let's look at one of them at, at one first. Uh, his first counterargument is the idea that life is a necessary condition for freedom. It is thus a greater right. The right to life is thus a greater right than the right to choose your own to choose how you live. And of course, one cannot exercise a lesser right at the cost of a greater one. For example, you cannot use your right to freedom of expression if it harms the public. So in other words, um, some other person's right to be free from harm is greater than your right to free expression. And so your right to free expression cannot be used, uh, cannot be exercised at the cost of the greater right to be free from harm. Similarly, if the life, if right to life is greater than the right to freedom, then the right to freedom cannot be used against the right to life. Another objection is grounded in the idea that the right to choose argument isn't actually um, in full force uh, for, for the proponents of assisted suicide. In other words, the pro-choice argument does not offer true choice. It does not offer unlimited choice. The choice to die is almost universally limited to instances of unendurable pain in short-term uh, life prognoses. In other words, you're not, the argument isn't that you have the, the right to choose when you die at all times and in all situations, and a healthy person could therefore choose to die. The argument uh, from the euthanasia perspective is that you have a right to die when you are very sick and near death and in extreme pain. But this is a very limited uh, right to die, and if your argument for euthanasia is supposed to be in, grounded in the freedom to choose, you ought not to be limiting that freedom. Now, besides offering counter-arguments to the fundamental right of autonomy position, uh, Dorflinger identifies some foreseeable problems in establishing uh, a legal euthanasia policy. The first problem is one which might be called compulsion. Um, while it may be that there is a clear logical distinction between voluntary and involuntary euthanasia, between people choosing to die or being forced to die before a natural death, psychologically speaking, the problem is not so clear-cut. It seems likely that an elderly person would feel compelled to choose uh, euthanasia. In other words, it would not be a real choice at all. Um, they would feel compelled to opt for euthanasia once they are old enough to be seen or to see themselves as a burden on their family and society. So in other words, you can set up euthanasia laws to respect choice but not all choice is created equal. Sometimes people can be forced to choose against their will. And in the case of euthanasia, the, sometimes, some of the populations in our culture that are most at risk for being compelled to do things, namely the elderly, would be most, uh, could be potentially the strongest target of this sort of compulsion. Furthermore, uh, legalizing euthanasia will give health providers a financial incentive to make it seem like a, a much more attractive option than long-term and costly treatments. So insurance providers, for example, um, 
would have a financial incentive to encourage the elderly to pick euthanasia since euthanizing an elderly person would be much or a very sick person whether they were elderly or not. Euthanasia is much cheaper than long-term costly treatments for things like cancer or Alzheimer's as an example. Finally, there is a concern that, uh, well, it is unlikely that proponents of euthanasia would refrain from expanding uh, that option to people for whom euthanasia was not previously considered a viable option. In other words, while euthanasia is initially going to be limited to people who are very sick and in very great pain and who ask for it, it's entirely possible, and Dorflinger argues, that it is likely that the list of people who society considers to be eligible for euthanasia or for whom euthanasia is a legitimate option would expand beyond the original parameters, perhaps eventually including people who we currently think of as merely disabled. This, of course, would be very bad. That, in a nutshell, is Dorflinger's position. He starts off by explaining why the support for euthanasia is perhaps tr problematic, and then offers some counter-arguments against euthanasia, uh, whether or not it has viable argumentative support. Thank you for listening to this very brief discussion or introduction to D Richard Dorflinger's uh, essay on assisted suicide, and have a good day.